Despite a very rocky start and a very controversial ending, the Friday the 13th video game from 2017 was a big success and is still sort of fun to play to this day, even if lacking in content and still covered to the brim in bugs. But despite the title, it's not actually the first video game based on the property. In fact, it's not even the second, because back in the 1980s we had two official video games based on the film franchise. The first of which was released back in 1985 on the Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC and ZX Spectrum, along with a much more well-known 1989 game released on the NES. There's also a very fun puzzle game from 2018 which is technically a sequel to another puzzle game called Slayaway Camp, obviously a spin on Sleepaway Camp, so why don't we take back a look in the history books to the other Friday the 13th video games as we commemorate the final video of Friday month. If you do enjoy this content, please be sure to subscribe and with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video with 1985's Friday the 13th, The Computer Game. Now sadly, I couldn't actually find this game online to be able to play it for you, but the history of this game is rather interesting. The game was developed under a very short time frame by Domark Software, who now are Square Enix Europe. You know, Tomb Raider, Just Cause, Deus Ex, yep, that's them. It was released on the Commodore 64 in 1985 and then was later ported to the Amstrad and Spectrum in 1986. Apparently it was Domac's first ever game they actually developed after publishing Eureka the year prior, meaning basically that the game was extremely basic and was created by a team with no real experience, leading to this mess. Now for the gameplay itself, Friday the 13th for computer game follows a formula closer to that of the original film and fifth film of the series with a whodunit scenario. Specifically, you play as one out of five possible counsellors per level, where at the bottom of the screen there are ten counsellors, one of which is Jason. After Jason has killed his first camper, he reveals himself to the player and they must hunt him down and kill him before he kills any more campers and lowers the total score you can get. There's only one map for the game which is split into six sections, along with some indoor locations, and to finish the game fully, the player must play as all five counsellors, who have very different statistics and defeat Jason every time. Now this is possibly a reference to the fact that by the time this was released there was five movies, but god knows and that sounds a bit too intelligent for what this game really is. The game's menu is also opened with what is possibly the first ever jump scare in a video game with this scream. Somehow that is video game history, that beautiful, beautiful pixelated pile of shite. Now, as stated, there are multiple versions of this game and one famous thing about the game is how truly awful this version is. Yeah, compare that to the other footage you've been seeing. So basically, the Amstrad and Commodore versions of the game had real character models, actual coloured graphics, even if it weren't the best, even at the time, jump scare horrors, as they were known, and music. The Spectrum had none of those. Every player model looked exactly the same, meaning that when Jason actually revealed himself, you wouldn't even know. The graphics, even at the time, looked horrific. It was slagged off in media even back then. The horror jump scares were completely absent, and the music was also completely absent, leaving just the scream and these walking noises. Nothing else. Now this essentially made the game unplayable at the time just due to the sheer tedium, along with the tons of bugs, and only being able to use your weapon to the right of the screen. So if Jason was on your left, you'd just die, really. Even so, the other two versions weren't perfect, as the Commodore version had a rather funny glitch, where if you attacked a dead body, it would bring it back to life. Wow, I'm impressed that the game could predict that before Jason Lives even comes out. Now, reception of the game across all the platforms was extremely negative. The only reviews I could actually find for time being through the Wayback Machine as a 3 out of 10 and a 4 out of 10 for the Spectrum version. However, there is a small cult fan base of the game, especially the Commodore 64 version, which got a fan made director's cut in 2009, which fixed some bugs as well as made the game a little bit more difficult. Good on them as far as I'm concerned. The game also received a large amount of controversy on release for the box art, subject matter for a video game, a Crash Magazine front cover, and the game coming with some fake quote-unquote foaming blood capsules, which is so tame to modern day standards since we've just got a Doom Eternal release. Now, sadly, there's not much else to say about this one. If not for fans reminding us and an old Eurogamer video, the game would have probably been completely forgotten. Now, there is probably a way to get the game on your PC, but honestly, 
I have no idea as I am a console peasant. And with that out of the way, let's move to 1989. Now this is probably the most famous game on this video and easily the easiest to play as the publishing of this video. It's currently on retrogames.cz and you can play it right now for free if you want to. Now Friday the 13th from 1989 is a very odd game. Developed by Atlas, most famous for creating the Persona series and being published by LGN who later became part of Acclaim. This game was released for same year as Paramount's final film in the original Friday the 13th timeline with Jason Takes Manhattan. The game was only released on the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES as part of LGN's new business strategy to focus on developing games on pre-existing IPs. Now despite their extreme similarities, the Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street games were not both developed by Atlas. Instead for that game, Rare, yes that Rare, developed it whilst LGN once again published it, explaining their blame similarities. Gameplay wise it could not be any different to the 1985 game and even the most recent games but with some running themes throughout. Once again you play as a counsellor and get to choose which one you want to play as but this time there's six instead of five. Woohoo! Once again they all have different statistics though. So far so similar however then the game starts and suddenly there's zombies. Fuck it. And the aim of the game is to defeat Jason three times as well as rescue all other five counsellors as well as all the children before Jason kills them. The game also introduces a very clever mechanic where you can switch between all six counsellors at any time just in case Jason is on the opposite side of the map to you and you need to get to him fast. The game uses a little indicator next to the counsellor's head for if Jason is close to killing someone or even killing them so you can quickly switch towards them and take control. As mentioned, to beat the game you must kill Jason three times over three different nights, in a similar style to like an old fighting game, something such as Punch Out for instance, and during this time you can also light all the fireplaces in order to get a special weapon, as well as read notes and just random other clues to unlock other items, as well as get some good old Friday the 13th floor because this franchise is just covered in storylines. Pamela Voorhees aka Jason's mother also appears in the game as a floating head, a reference to her beheaded appearance in part 2 as well as looking weirdly Medusa-esque in my opinion. Multiple weapons also appear throughout the game and you can upgrade them if you wish, with the overall map of the game being very large for a 1980s game with many different pathways and branching. The game ends when you kill Jason, duh, for the third time, or when either all the counsellors are dead, meaning you have no more playable characters, or if the children get killed, which is grim as fuck and something that the movies practically ignore, especially with Jason Lips. Now the reception to this game is very famously negative as hell from both fans and critics for its dull gameplay and lack of faith to the actual source material, going instead for a weird fantasy wannabe RPG genre compared to a slasher fest which is what it should have been. Now compared to the first game this one actually has plenty of reviews from the time still in existence that you can check out yourself so instead I'm going to mention the awesome legacy of this game's Jason. Now despite being a really dumb design of pink and blue, NES Jason has remained popular since its creation with toys being made and most famously the character being a skin for part 3 Jason in the 2017 video game. He also comes with NES music because fuck it. Now as stated this game was extremely easy to find online and yes it's very bad in my opinion but it's definitely a fun bad compared to just a boring bad and a very important part of not just Friday the 13th history but survival horror history as well. I mean compare this to the Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake I've got coming out soon and wow we have come very far when it comes to horror games. If you do want to check out the game I'll leave a link in the description below but without the way let's move on to 2018. Now, as mentioned earlier, Friday the 13th Killer Puzzle is oddly a sequel of sorts. It was developed and published by Blue Wizard Digital, who also created the amazing Sleepaway Camp puzzle game, and Killer Puzzle follows the exact same formula of that game, but with an official Friday the 13th skin, instead of being a parody of movies such as Friday and Sleepaway Camp. Now currently the game has only been released for PC, the Nintendo Switch and mobile devices despite Sleepaway Camp also being released on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 and originally a North America only release in January, the game was eventually released in April worldwide of 2018. For the gameplay itself it's an asymmetric puzzle game where you play as Jason who must kill all the counsellors surprise surprise, usually in a very specific order and then exit the location which can be much more difficult than it sounds. 
as Jason can only move in one complete movement, meaning no moving just one square and you can't stop wherever you want. It's wherever it ends with that specific pathway. The game features three different game modes. The main puzzle game, The Daily Death, where daily puzzles are released and by completing 13 of them, you unlock Ghost Jason from Never Hike Alone. And finally, there's Murder Marathon, where all you have to do is special kills on as many people as possible by hitting them at the correct time. The main game also includes these special kills where, depending on the weapon selected, you'll be given a random animation of Jason killing a victim with that specific weapon. Conversely, the game also comes with an in-game microtransaction shop nicknamed Mama's Mega Bundles, where you can buy different skins for Jason including NES Jason, weapon boxes which are cheap but have very questionable odds in my opinion, as well as 4 extra maps. Currently including those 4 DLC slash microtransaction maps, there are 12 maps in total, but due to the rights issue for the franchise, it is unknown if more are planned or if more will ever be made. Now, personally, I have a very big issue with microtransactions. I don't think they're necessary in a game that you pay for, and especially when a lot of the microtransactions in this game seem to be almost DLC-like that have now been hidden in microtransactions. I really don't understand the point, and it just brings negative attention to the game when it really doesn't need it. Saying that though, overall reception to the game has been extremely positive. Its current score on iOS is in 4.8 out of 5 based on over 3,000 ratings, and a 4 out of 5 on Android with nearly 200,000 ratings. It also has a 9 out of 10 on Steam, and a 76 on Metacritic for the Switch version, which makes it the highest reviewed game in the franchise to date. Now honestly, I've played a lot of this game, and I do prefer Slayerware Camp for its variety, but these are really good puzzles. I really hope that one day Blue Wizard Digital makes another game like these, but with each chapter focusing on a completely different licensed franchise, such as how Dead by Daylight does it. But out of the three games on here, I'd recommend this one the most. Yes, it's the one which you'd have to pay for sadly, but it is worth it even with the irritating microtransactions. And that is it for today's video. Obviously there's also the 2017 Friday the 13th game, but that one's high profile and it's definitely not forgotten or ignored, so there's no point putting it in this list, I guess you could call it. But without the way, if you do enjoy this kind of content, please be sure to like and subscribe. I know coronavirus has become like the biggest talking point ever, so I have started doing quote unquote daily videos on a new channel that I've just started known as Classic Who. It's basically just to keep my mind busy during this really shit time so I don't have breakdowns every 10 seconds. I've decided to try and colorize the original Doctor Who serial and Unearthly Child frame by frame, going about 20 frames per second, which is a bit less than usual. Essentially just coloring them in using an auto colorer off of the internet and it's not the best looking thing, but I'm quite enjoying doing it and hopefully people are enjoying seeing it so if you do want to check that out just check out classic who um but yeah with that out of the way i hope you have a lovely week until i see you next time with my first in the alien series videos this coronavirus shit really sucks so i don't really know what else to say about that i mean i will be trying to upload more content and obviously use my content as much as you want as an escape goat because it's, we're going to be stuck here for a while, especially in England. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well and try and stay safe, stay indoors, and I will see you next week. Goodbye.